Let's talk about all the details of first grade math with confidence. Hi, I am Rachel from Seven and All. I am a second generation homeschool mom to three boys and we are coming toward the end, the very end of using first grade math with confidence with my oldest son. So I wanted to come to you with a detailed review, sharing our experience with using this curriculum, helping you to understand this curriculum a little more. And I do want to address some questions or concerns people have asked me about this as far as setup time, whether this curriculum is too easy and some questions like that. So get ready. We're gonna have a nice nerdy homeschool video today, my favorite kind to film. First of all, I just want to talk about the overall structure as an introduction to what this curriculum is like. There is a very, very large and hefty teacher's guide. Um, this curriculum is available by in a PDF format from The Well-Trained Mind, but I did opt to get hard copies because especially with such a big teacher's guide, I feel like it stays together when it's professionally printed versus printed at home. It stays together a little better. Um, and there's a student book. So the student book is significantly thinner than the teacher's manual. The student book is very, very colorful. Colorful. This is an unused one because I already bought an uh, unused student book for my second son. Um, and then the teacher's guide is all in black and white. Black and white. So the way that this curriculum is structured is that it is structured into units and within those units, each week will typically have a lesson focus or a lesson theme. For example, you're learning the plus nine addition facts during that week and you're doing different activities to focus, practice, and review those facts within that week. Now that doesn't mean you're, that's the only thing you're working on. There are reviews integrated into the lessons, um, but there does tend to be a theme for each week and then a couple weeks will be gathered together in a similar themed unit. Now there are five lessons scheduled for each week. The first four are traditional lessons that come with workbook pages. And then the last lesson of the week is a little bit more of a non-traditional lesson in which you will be scheduled to read a math picture book and do typically a more interactive or active math activity that connects math to real life. So that's your fifth lesson of the week and you also usually do some oral review in that lesson. So for just an example of the sorts of math books you might find yourself reading throughout the year, um, Applesauce Season was one, Can You Count to a Google, Game Time, this is talking about time, so when you're having a week focused on time, learning about time and quarters of an hour, halves of an hour. 100 Snowmen was another one. This has a lot of addition all throughout. I did not purchase all of the picture books recommended by um, Kate Snow, but I did try to get a good handful of them and I got ones in different topics. And a lot of people ask, you know, whether it's worthwhile. Um, I got most of them used from thrift books, so they were only a couple dollars each. For me, they have been incredibly worthwhile. My son loves the math picture books. None of these books have been books that we have read just one time. Quite a few of them we have read upwards of a dozen times and they get requested um, often. My son will take them off the shelf and sneak them into our morning time pile. Um, but my boys have really, really enjoyed math themed picture books. And so that has been a highlight of the curriculum for us, just having those recommendations that tie into whatever we're learning about this week and being able to read the books that we have. Some of them we have found on YouTube, a few of them we've been able to find at the library. But for the most part, we have pretty much done all of those picture book lessons um, as scheduled. Another um, element that you're going to want to have set up for the curriculum, and this you kind of have to put together yourself, will be a set of manipulatives. So this includes things like a deck of cards, which you will use a lot, like play money, um, coins, as well as bills, dice you'll be using a lot, some kind of marker, I use little circle bingo markers, and a lot of index cards. She's kind of famous for having you use lots and lots of index cards to make your own 
number flashcards, tally marks flashcards, and I just keep all the resources together in this little multi-compartment plastic box. So that's the main structure and the main elements of the program. Teacher's book, student workbook, you've got your manipulatives as well as your picture books. For me, this is a great starting point for a very well-rounded math curriculum and math experience. I will just tell you from the very beginning of this review, I'm not going to bury um, how I feel about this. This curriculum was a lot of fun to use. There was never unenjoyable days in math. Now granted, I have a child who really loves math, so that is going to shape the experience. However your child um, is and how they interact and how they do math, that's going to shape the experience more so than the curriculum, but this was a curriculum I found very, very enjoyable to use, and I don't consider myself a huge math lover, although the more time I spend with my son, the more I'm learning to appreciate math. Um, but So within the teacher's guide, you have very detailed scripted lessons um, for each day, uh, and they have three main parts. You have a warm-up, which will have typically oral reviews, so, for example, in this lesson, you have, have your child count by twos to 40, and they suggest that you can do it with a 100 number chart, or you could do it without, and there were some days we used the 100 number chart, some days we used without. I think there's benefit to having the visual and benefit to doing it without the visual. Um, then, for memory work, they were working on right and left. So, do a little quick practice with right and left, and play Simon Says, giving them some instructions involving using left or right side of the body. Then you have a little activity where you're introducing terms like sum and add and here, and then you play a addition game using cards, and then you do your workbook. So that's the basically three elements of the lesson. You have your warm up, which has oral reviews. Then you have your lesson activity, which is some kind of short activity, either introducing a topic or giving opportunities to practice a topic or a lot of times adding on maybe a second strategy for how to solve a type of problem, or just adding on and building off of a topic a little more. And then you end the lesson with the workbook. And for the first grade level, it's two sides of a workbook page. In the kindergarten level, it's just one side. In the first grade level, it is two sides, so front and back. The front page typically deals with whatever you were learning about in the lesson, and the back side of the page is typically going to be just review and will bring in a couple other topics that you were learning about before. Now, one thing to note and appreciate about the student workbook is the game of boards. These are scattered throughout the whole workbook. You occasionally bump into a lesson that has a game board, and then you will occasionally be directed to go back to that lesson's game board. So they are just pages in the workbook that typically you're not writing on them because they're going to be reusable, but you're using bingo markers, and then you're using cards, or you're using dice, and you're playing some kind of subtraction game in this example, or you're playing an addition game. Um, specific types of addition. Some of them are working on adding eights and adding sevens. Um, different, different, different types of games, but my son loves those and usually has to play them multiple times in a lesson and will often request, like he'll look forward in the book to see, okay, when's the next time we're getting a new game board? Or he'll request to go back and if we have some extra time, I'll be like, sure, we can go back and play the game. He loves the little slight element of competition. Nothing, you know, too intense, um, but getting that competition from the game boards. And these are fantastic for just fun practice. I know what she's doing as a teacher. I know that by having this game practice, you're working on building speed and fluency with these addition and subtraction packs. I know that. Um, he doesn't necessarily know that. He sees it as getting to play a game during school time um, and loves that. So with those games and with the review that is throughout the program, that gives you a lot of opportunities to review and to build fact fluency for those kids that do need a lot of review. So you can do less on the reviews and the games if your child doesn't need it or if your child's not that into it, or you can do more if your child is loving it or if you find that your child will benefit from it to gain fluency. Now, what are some aspects that I loved? First of all, I love the warm up and the review section of every day. I am just not the type of parent who, or teacher who thinks, okay, count by fives to 100, 
count by tens, count by twos, or, you know, tends to think of doing these little reviews and drills. I'm not a big drill person myself, but I do find them beneficial for my children. So I'm glad that, hey, the teacher's guide tells me to do drills and then I do them and I see the benefit in them. So I really like those. Um, my son started um, really having some big leaps in his math abilities. As we worked through this, he was just having some developmental leaps there. So I did start adapting some of these drills to make them more challenging for him. So there would be certain warm-ups where I'm supposed to put out coins, put out five nickels and a penny and ask how much money that was. Um, so to adapt it to make it more challenging, I just wouldn't put out the coins. I would just ask him, hey, so if, I, if you had five nickels and one penny, how much money would you have? So that kind of levels it up because he can't see them. He has to picture it in his mind or think about what those coins are worth in his mind. Um, so little things like that I could do to adapt these warm-ups and these drills to make them more challenging as he started advancing quicker. I also loved that this is a curriculum that's very, very strong on mental math strategies. And they give you multiple different mental math strategies. This is not um, your more traditionally oriented math program and it's not really focused on memorizing facts but it is very much focused on thinking about what's going on and thinking about strategies that you can use to solve a problem. I found it very strong in that regard. Now um, one question I've gotten a lot or one comment I see a lot on math with confidence is is it going to be too easy? Is this too easy of a math curriculum? And I would say looking at other math curriculums that I'm familiar with. So for example, Matthew C. Alpha. Matthew C. Alpha does work with bigger numbers. First grade math with confidence does clearly stick to smaller quantities and smaller numbers and works on developing a very deep, deep understanding of those numbers and of working within those numbers. It does not go straight into doing addition or subtraction with larger quantities. It does stick to smaller quantities so by comparison, when I look at Matthew C. Alpha, I see them start to work a little bit with larger three-digit numbers in that first grade program. In comparison to first grade Abeka, another curriculum I'm familiar with, that one is having your child do a significant more amount of writing. So where um, Math with Confidence will have you be doing oral counting drills with counting by fives, counting by tens, counting by twos, um, a lot, very frequently, uh, Matthew, sorry, Abeka first grade will have your child do a lot of writing of those counting by ones, counting by twos, by fives, by tens. Your child will be doing a lot more of writing those numbers and they just will typically have more problems on a page. Um, you, you're doing quite a bit more as far as written work. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily, uh, well, I would say that Abeka math is probably a little bit harder. I do think that they tend to be ahead of grade level. I would say that it's harder and it's more written work. However, I would not say that first grade math with confidence is unusually gentle for a first grade math program. It's probably fairly on par with other math programs that are designed to be on grade level and then other math curriculums like Abeka, which are designed to be a little bit more advanced, are going to be a little more advanced and more challenging in some sense, but not necessarily with the focus on mental math strategies that Math with Confidence has. Now, that being said, regarding whether this math is too easy, I do want to mention, I was using this first grade Math with Confidence with a kindergarten student this year who flew through it and did find it very easy. Granted, he's clearly advanced in math and also really loves math. <laughs> um, so that's where I want to say with all children, don't just look at the grade on the cover and buy that book with all children and with all curriculums. I would recommend this. Look at the scope and sequence, look at what's being taught, look at what your child knows and what their capabilities are to make sure that you are choosing the right level for your child. I would not have been happy at all with this as a pick for first grade for my son. He's not due to start first grade for months and already he's coming to the end of this and has found the work very, very easy. I think it's been beneficial for him to slow him down and think about math strategies versus just forging ahead in his own unique invented strategies. Um, 
So I found it very beneficial for him, but I would not have found it beneficial for him as a first grade math, just given his natural bent, his natural, the way his mind is working. So for some kids, you definitely might not want to be placing them at grade level in this curriculum or in any math curriculum. Place your child at the level that fits where they are at versus just arbitrarily choosing the level based on their age. Some other comments or feedback you might sometimes hear about math with confidence is that the setup can be too time consuming or difficult because you are using multiple different manipulatives, you are doing some games, so you might need to get cards or dice or index cards. Um, for me, the way I handle that is one, I keep everything all together, so I am never rushing around trying to find things. Everything stays in this box as far as math manipulatives. And another thing I do is to, I set up all of our schoolwork, not just math, but anything else I need for any other lessons of the day. I set up all the schoolwork before I call my children to the table for classes. So I'm never trying to set up while they're sitting here waiting, getting impatient, and I'm losing their attention. So those are two elements that I think make it a little bit easier. And the third one is me. I'm not the kind of person that makes things harder than they need to be, and I'm not, the person who's like looking and thinking like I have to follow everything exactly the way it says in this book. So for example, let's show this. Her suggestion for manipulatives for groups of 10 is to have little bags or little cups with 10 small individual items in each one. I see that, I'm like, I don't need to do that. I have Matthew C blocks. I have the blue 10 bars from Matthew C. I'm just gonna use those for manipulative manipulatives of 10. And then also, as I was finding that my son is moving really fast and just clicking onto everything really quickly in math, I was realizing, you know, I don't even need all that many visuals or manipulatives all the time, not that we never use them, but if I'm having a day where I wanna get through things a little faster, I just won't use manipulatives because he's not the student who needs to always see it. He can see the numbers in his head. He can understand the numbers in his head. So I don't need to use the manipulatives all the time. With other children, they are going to need to see it. They are going to need to visualize it, touch it, feel it. So with some kids, they are gonna need more of that physical, movable manipulative. And then with other kids, you might look at your child and realize they don't actually need it so much. So we can kind of shorten this. I don't need to get those out. <laughs> or I can simplify it by using 10 bars um, instead of putting 10 individual items in a cup, that sounds tedious. <laughs> I can simplify this, find ways to make it a little bit easier. So I think all of those factors are things that made this an easy curriculum for me to use. I'm not afraid to adapt it. I'm also very efficient. I keep everything in the same place. I don't lose things. And the last one is I always set up before I call my kids to the table. So that is my full review. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions about details that you have down below. We really enjoyed using this during his kindergarten year. We did end up speeding through it toward the end just because he was gobbling up math so very quickly. Stay tuned to see what we will be doing um, in now that we're done with this. And if you like these nerdy sorts of homeschool videos and curriculum reviews, definitely subscribe and like this video. There are plenty more where this came from. Bye.